Hello. Welcome to White Dairy Gardening and Worm Farm. Oh, sorry about that. I have a call coming in just as soon as I start the live. Let's quiet this thing. So we're going to be continuing our discussion on we're going to be continuing our discussion on potato bugs and we're going to discuss a few other types of pests and what we can plant in order to repel them. Oh, these people are very determined. Just a minute, please. Hello, I apologize, but I'm not able to talk to you at the moment. So could you call me back within an hour and a half from now? Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so the last time we were doing this discussion of the potato bugs, I was having a bit of issue with my internet and so the live was terminated prematurely. So we're going to be continuing that discussion. In the previous discussion, we looked at potato bugs, how you can identify them by the shape, their size, their color. We talk about high CC. We spoke about their larvae and their eggs and we discussed the fact that one potato box can lay up to three between 300 and 500 eggs and they lay them in clusters of 20 to 30 eggs and that happens over a period of few weeks so we discuss all of these points and then we look at things we started looking at things that we could do in order to repel or at least control the, pot, the potato bugs and so we one of the things that we discussed is planting earlier variety and we discussed the fact that the earlier variety will take anything from 80, day, 80 days or so to reach the maturity and we also discussed that the early variety they don't last as long when you're storing them they don't last as long as the regular variety and we also discussed the need to rotate the potatoes and not just the potatoes but anything that falls into the nightshade family because anything in the nightshade family can be affected by the potato bugs okay Right, so where possible, if you are not able to rotate your where you plant your potatoes and nightshades, especially for a lot of gardeners who tend to plant carrots, cabbages, to not cabbages, carrots, tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes, and these are what most gardeners will plant, especially new gardeners. And so they might not have a lot of growing space, so rotating what they're growing can be a challenge. If that is the case, then of course, you might choose to plant these type of vegetables every couple of years. So you'd give your garden a year break or two years break from these type of vegetables and grow something else. Of course, it can be frustrating when you want to grow something, you don't have enough space. And because of the pest, you have to choose to grow something else. But when we're faced with challenges, rather than giving up, we're always, we always have to try to find an alternative. <laughs> Hi, Growing with Jay. Yes, we always have to try to find some other alternative because giving up is never really an option. Unless you've tried everything you can think of and nothing works, then fine. At that point in time, it's okay to give up. But, well, for me, that would be the point to give up. But uh, trying everything would 
be the first option. So if you have smaller gardens, then you can underpick the bugs and you can remove their eggs and their larvae. You don't want to remove them and not destroy them. Once you have them, you have to destroy them because as we discussed in the previous live, the fact that potato bugs are very resilient, especially when it comes to pesticides, they get used to it very quickly. And so diatomaceous earth is one of the best pesticides that you can use for the potato bugs. Oh, hi, Russell. Yeah, so diatomaceous earth is one of the best pesticides that you can use for potato bugs. And the reason for that is all the other pesticides are chemical based, whether natural or artificial. Whereas the diatomaceous earth is actually rock particles. And these particles, when the bugs or the larvae move over it, it will actually cut into their waxy protective layer and cause them bodily harm. So for that reason, hi chain breakers, hi Han White. Yes, yeah, so that for that reason, you want to make sure that you have diatomaceous earth. Hi Eric, it's been a while. Hi Leafy Wiggy. Yes, yeah, so having diatomaceous earth on hand is always a good practice, not just for potato bugs, but like the potato bugs that can become resilient to pesticide, all other pests can become resilient to pesticide as well. But nobody can resist, or none of these pests can resist the diatomaceous earth. As long as they are going to come in contact with it, the diatomaceous earth is going to cause them harm. And depending on how much contact they have with the diatomaceous earth, it will lead to their death. So having diatomaceous earth is always a good choice. Now, as I mentioned, you can hand pick them. And for the larvae and the eggs, these you can destroy by putting them in soapy water or by crushing them. Oh, thank you, Eric. <laughs> thank you. Yes, so you can destroy the larvae and the eggs by crushing them or by putting them in soapy water. The potato, the potato bugs, they do fly. So even if you get your potatoes to the point where you're not seeing any bugs anymore, your neighbors might be growing potatoes and can have potato bugs there. Or they can travel pretty far because... It is recommended that if you're planting potatoes and you have a lot of issues with potato bugs, you don't plant potatoes if you have others that plant potatoes within a mile of you. So that is not practical for a lot of us small gardeners because your neighbor is just across the fence there and they might be growing potatoes. But the point is, if it is recommended that you don't plant potatoes if someone within a mile of you is planting potato. It is an indication that these bugs can fly pretty far and wide. So even if you get your potato bugs under control, you still need to monitor the plants regularly because new bugs can always fly in. And of course, the bugs could have, have larvae that fell off the plant into the soil and you did not see the larvae and those stay there and become adults. So even if you think you have everything under control, once you start having potato bugs, it's good to keep at it. Yeah, so that's the situation that I'm in now. So for the past two days, I haven't seen any bugs. I haven't seen any eggs. None of the eggs that were laid on my potatoes got the chance to make it to larvae because I check once or twice a day. And the, bug, the eggs usually take anything from four days to a month, depending on temperature, to hatch. 
So I haven't seen any bugs or any larvae in the past two days, but I'm still remaining vigilant because I don't want to take unnecessary chances. Okay, so what are some predators that feed on potato bugs? The, the fungus that is called Bovaria bassiana that will kill the adults and the larvae, but it won't destroy the eggs. Ladybugs and stink bugs will eat the eggs of these potato bugs. Birds like to prey on the potato bugs as well, so you can do things to attract birds into your garden. Of course, sometimes the birds can be problematic to your garden, so you want to be careful, but yes. Having birds around may help to control the potato bugs. If you have, if you raise chickens or ducks, then they can also help to control the population. And if you're in areas where you have toads, they will eat the potato bugs as well and ground beetles. So these are some of the predators that prey on potato bugs. Now, is there any synthetic pesticide that you can use to control potato bugs? Potato bugs, as I mentioned before, they have developed a resistance to most of the synthetic, to most of the synthetic pesticide, but they are not resistant to let me see if I can pronounce this word properly. I don't know. <laughs> As a direct thin and also spinosad. So these two chemicals, they are not resistant to. So let me see if I can pronounce that again. As a direct thin or spinosad. So these are gentle on animals that actually preys on potato bugs but then they will kill the potato bugs so if you try one type of pesticide and it doesn't work then naturally you're going to be trying something else you want to look for if you try a particular type of pesticide pay close attention to the active ingredient in it and then when you decide to try something else, you want to ensure that the active ingredient in it is not the same as the one that you have tried before because the potato box would have developed some resistance to the previous active ingredients. Let's see, Eric says, just got our first breadfruit. Oh, yum, yum, yum. I haven't had that in so many years. Yeah, we need some roasted ones now or some boiled ones. But yeah, I haven't had breadfruit in so many years. The Jamaican store do get it sometimes, but it's not always nice to buy products when they travel from afar, especially if you cannot look at it to see what damage might be done to the plants. Because, you know, breadfruit sometimes wasp and bees will try to suck the liquid from the fruit and then it's kind of difficult to tell if that is happening to the breadfruit especially since sometimes when they get breadfruit at the store it is they roast it yeah so you can't really tell if the damage is there so for that reason even when they get it i don't buy it so i haven't had breadfruit in quite a while i do miss it especially since it is a part of our national dish not that the breadfruit is but we usually have it with the national dish the ackee and saltfish roast breadfruit and ackee and saltfish oh yeah <laughs> oh you boil it in coconut milk i've never done it that way i'll have to try it one day hopefully i can get my hands on some really nice breadfruit whether it is here or i have to go back home to get it but I would definitely have to try it, that method because I know the coconut milk is just whatever you're cooking and you had your coconut milk, 
especially if you can get the real coconut milk, not the ones that they have in cans or packages because a lot of time it's not the same. But yeah. Oh, Leafy Wiggy. Your calendula has bloom. Nice. Okay, so you're going to be using it to make foliage spray for your pests. That's lovely. Yeah. Okay, you have lots of dried coconuts. Nice. It's a pity they can't grow here. <laughs> I love coconut so much. In any way you can prepare it, I love it, but we don't have it here. And just like the breadfruit, it's not easy to find good quality, even though a wide variety of stores carry it some, sometimes. It's not easy to find a good one. So when they're... When they're importing these things they like to harvest them while they are not mature yet and then when you buy it you get something that is not the best so anyway i guess that's life <laughs> yeah. oh i've never really seen the blooms so i'm gonna have to look that up i've never really seen the blooms did you, did you start it from seeds, um, Leafy Wiggy, or did you buy the plant? Okay, so the azadirac thin is taken from, is actually taken from neem oil, and it will work for a few days, and then the treatment will have to be repeated every couple of days. Of course, it worked best on the eggs rather than on the mature potato bugs. Spinosad, which is a soil bacterium, it is very effective, but it is usually effective for around 10 to 14 days. So these are the two active ingredients or the what is it called? Yes, the two active ingredients that are effective against potato bugs. There are others, of course, but these are more effective than a lot of the others. So I don't know if you guys have any natural remedies around the home that you use for those of you who have encountered the potato bugs. So we're going to be discussing some homemade pesticide that will help to control them. So just a few of them. Um, well, not all of them is homemade. So it's soapy water, as I mentioned. If you use one to two tablespoons of dish soap with a gallon of water, and you want to spray the bugs and the larvae directly, not the leaves of the plant, but you want to get the bugs themselves. When you do that, that will help to control these potato bugs. Okay, so soapy water is one method. The BTK works well but it works on the larvae or the eggs, but it does not work on the bugs, on the adults. So once you start seeing the potato bugs, make sure, once you start seeing the eggs or the larvae, get your BTK and start working on them. Let's see. Okay, you started them from seeds, all organically grown, that's good. Does it have a long blooming season or is it a short one? It seems as if a lot of the flowers here tend to have a short period of time that they actually bloom. So that is something I'm going to have to figure out when it comes to flowers because I'm just starting to plant flowers. I'm not really, I love flowers, but 
I don't really want to sacrifice my vegetable garden space in order to plant flowers. So I'm trying to create little pots of flowers here and there. But then because some of these flowers are pest repelling, so now I'm definitely going into planting those flowers that repel pests. But I don't know what flowers bloom what season because I'd like to plant it where it can be continuous. So when one type of flower stops blooming, another one will start. So I can have a little bit of beauty at the same time or all the time. Okay, you're not sure. Okay. Yes, yeah, so the BTK works on the potato bug larvae, but not on the adult bug. Neem oil also is very effective against the potato bugs. As I mentioned before, that difficult name to call pesticide comes from neem oil, the azadiractin, or whatever it's pronounced. Yes, yeah, so it will kill the larvae quickly, but it will actually take a while, the neem oil that is, it will actually take a while before it kills the bugs. And as I mentioned previously, diatomaceous earth, this will destroy both the larvae, the eggs, and the adults, which is pretty good. Now, one very effective method that you can use to prevent yourself from having them in the first place if you know that your region is prone to them but you haven't had that issue yet is to use row, floating row cover because it will help to keep them out russell says i found a really cool really cool red mite on my potato yesterday it runs about 10 to 15 milliliter then spins in a circle then repeat oh interesting <laughs> i have been looking for more today i have spotted what i think are predator wasp oh okay thinking they may be eating my thrips have to go out with magnifying lens to confirm okay so the so are you trying to confirm the predator wasp with the magnifying glass or are you trying to um confirm whether it is thrips i'm not really sure what the predator wasp look like i'm gonna to have to investigate that you know this last year i had a so many wasp run okay both okay i had so many wasp running around in um in my garden last year it was not really a nice experience because i got stung by one and then i was conscious of my kids constantly going up and down in the garden and then the wasp were always on the height of my youngest child so i was always concerned that he would get a lot of stings <laughs> but thankfully he didn't but this year i thought that i would see a lot of them but i've only seen a few of them here and there because they have made their nest under one of my raised beds and i sprayed some solution in there last year just before the fall and then when i gathered the wood chips mulch i build it up in the area where i see them going underneath the raised bed so i don't know if it is the case where they could not get out so they died off in there or they're underneath their life i don't know what the story is but i don't see any coming and going underneath the raised bed anymore i did see one or two going in a different location this year but nothing going underneath the raised bed so i'm pretty happy about that but then I'm not seeing a lot of any type of insects this year. I'm not sure what's going on yet. I don't know if maybe because my plants are not big enough yet where they're actually in the flowering stage. That could be it, but I don't know. But I'm happy I'm not seeing any of those wasps. Okay, so now that covers the potato bugs. 
let's talk a little bit about other types of pests and what can be planted to control these pests. Now, let's talk about some plants that repel pests. Now, some plants that are good at repelling one particular type of pest is very good at attracting another type of pests. And so it can be tricky to control the pest in your garden because you have to be trying to cover all the various angles because if you're going to be planting up something to repel aphid and that plant is going to attract spider mites, then you're going to have to start thinking about planting something that is going to repel spider mites as well. So it can be a bit tricky, but it can be done. Of course, you're never going to have full control, but we can always do our best because that's the most we can do, right? Our very best. Right, so some type of pesticides that may kill both pest and beneficial some types of pesticides will kill both pest and beneficial insects. And so it is a good idea to do a little bit of research on the pesticide that you're using, whether it is pomade or it is commercial pesticide. It's good to do a little bit of research because we want to limit how much we destroy the beneficial insects because they are going to be helping to keep or pest population down. Oh, hi, Helpy. <laughs> yes, you made it. Right. Of course, you know, sometimes even if you do your research on pests that, on pesticides that will affect the beneficial insects, sometimes we really don't have any control. Sometimes the situation is so bad that we have to use the pesticide or our crop is going to be decimated. So there is always a positive and a negative side to everything. But as far as is possible, we want to try to ensure that we do not do anything that is going to be harming the beneficial pests. Now, what are some plants that repels aphids, since as aphids seem to be one of the very popular type of pest and they're very difficult to get rid of so some plants that are good at repelling these pests include things like marigold catnip fennel dill cilantro garlic onions just to name a few but some of the plants that aphids do like so we look at the plants that repel aphids some of the plants that aphids do like include things like chrysanthemums and nasturtiums mustards cosmos dahlia zinnia and the sunflowers so if you have these plants in your garden you know there's a possibility that you're going to be having problems with aphids but then you can always plant those plants that repel them now what about spider mites what are some plants that will repel them chrysanthemums chives dill garlic onion and parsley are very good for repelling these spider mites so now that most of us have our garden in full swing or partially on the way, some of us have even reached the point where we're already harvesting stuff. Now is the time when we're going to be seeing a lot of pests. So this information might prove useful to those who may encounter these types of pests. Now, what are some plants that spider mites actually love? they love fruit so they will be on your fruit trees they will be on your vegetables they pretty much love all your vegetables if you grow gerbera they love that and they love to be on your beans as well 
Now, what are some types of homemade pesticides that you can use in your garden? And these are usually good for controlling more than one type of garden pests. So stinging nettle is a very good one. Baking soda, neem oil or garlic. These are very good. So for to make a pesticide with the neem oil, you would need two teaspoons of the baking soda, one quart of the of water and one teaspoon of the neem oil or if you're going to be making the garlic you would crush garlic and soak it for hours in water and that works well too yesterday i learned that the cicadas are in the aphid family really oh interesting that's interesting yeah Thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that. That is why I like to do these lives because I get so much information from you guys. Now, cornmeal is also a very good pesticide for certain types of insects, worm type. It does not affect your garden worms like your regular earthworms or stuff like that. But... The larvae, they tend to, the cornmeal tend to affect larvae and it affects ants. So if you have too much ants in your worm bin and all you need to do with the cornmeal is to spread it out in your garden because the ants and a lot of these larvae, they love the cornmeal but they cannot digest it and so it will lead to their death. You can also use cayenne pepper one teaspoon of cayenne pepper with a quart of water and you spray this on your plants or cinnamon cinnamon works well because of the strong scent that it has okay you didn't know that either lp yeah So cinnamon, because of its height, is very good at repelling some pests. Does catnip repel? If you have catnip in your garden, it's going to repel things like aphids, beetles, and shields. Nasturtium, it will repel a... Well, some, some say that the nasturtium tend to be some more cinnamon because the water ten caterpillars, cheese and bugs, and white flies as well. It will bad nematodes. And you know, they said it is also good at repelling rabbits. So we are through my garden. So we'll see this year since as I'm growing marigold for the first time if it is actually going to repel them. Oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing any notifications saying anything is wrong with my internet, so I don't know if it is just you. I will have to just wait and see if what the answer is if anyone respond. Okay, so Leafy says the potato bugs are messing with the stream again. <laughs> okay, just started working again. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, because I was wondering, I noticed that the number of views was going, the viewers were going down, but I thought that, you know, people will come and people are busy, so people will go. So I thought that was it. I didn't realize that the stream was having issues. So thanks for letting me know. Yes. So if, if you were having issues with the stream, 
LP, did you hear the answer to the question that you asked about using the cinnamon straight or mixing it? Let me know, and if so, I can repeat the answer for you if needed. Okay, so... Here is a formula if... Okay, you did not hear it. Oh, hi, Matlasian. How are you? It's been a while. We're keeping you busy as usual, eh? <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Helpy. Okay, so the answer, the cinnamon, you put it in your garden straight. Of course, you know that if it rains, it's going to get washed away. Or if you water the garden after you put the cinnamon, it's going to get washed away. And then the scent that is the, what it really helps to repel the pests will be washed away. So you will need to add more. So that is the disadvantage of using the cinnamon. But then I was saying, depending on what watering system you have, you may choose to put the cinnamon around the perimeter of your garden because when you put it around the perimeter, depending on your watering system, then the cinnamon will remain in place unless it rains, of course. Right, so you use it straight just as it is and sprinkle it across your garden. So here is a formula to make a really potent mix for your pests. Okay, work is crazy season now. I got all my peppers planted, strawberries and tomatoes, and so far that's it, time-wise. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't really work full-time anymore, but I had a little project that I was working on, and I could only work on it in the evenings because someone has to be here to look after the kids. And the project that is supposed to take me two weeks to complete, it took six weeks, seven weeks. <laughs> so I haven't been able to tend to my garden the way I should. But yeah, work does as well. We have keeping you away from your garden. But I'm glad that you were able to get some of your plants in at least. Hopefully they will do well for you and produce. So at least you will reap some awesome benefits. Yes, so I was going to give you the formula for a very potent pesticide. So, hi, Herb and Kiki. So, one using one bulb of garlic and one, <coughs> excuse me, and one small onion, one teaspoon of cayenne powder in a quart of water and then add a teaspoon of dish soap you want to allow this to steep for at least an hour and then spray it on your plants and especially on the underside of your leaves now remember with any pesticide that you're using whether homemade or commercial pesticide it is always important to test the pesticide on a few leaves to ensure that it is not too strong for your plants and if you're using it on a wide variety of plants it might <coughs> it might be too strong for some plants and not too strong for others so you might want to do a little test on several types of plants so that you won't jump ahead and spray all your plants and end up losing them or at least damaging them i made that mistake last year when i was having issues with aphids and spider mites and i bought a commercial pesticide and i almost destroyed my entire crop so although i blame the I blamed the pesticide, but then I realized that it was my fault because I should have tested it on the plant first. 
but always test your pesticides. Okay, everyone is just saying greetings. Okay. Yeah, so after you have completed your test, if there is any damage to your plants, you see that it is too strong, then you can always dilute it. If it is too weak, then you might need to add some more ingredients and let it steep a little longer. Let's see. I do have a question. I see powdery mildew on some leaves. What's the best way to deal with it? I'm stripping leaves, but that can't be the right thing. Okay. Oh. One, you're going to make sure that your plants are not too close together because leafy mildew is a fungus or a mold. So it is easily transferred from one plant to another. So make sure that your plants are not too close. In addition to that, you have to make sure that your plants, the leaves of your plants are not being watered when you're watering your plants. If that is something you can control, of course, because that is going to cause the mold to spread from one thing to another. As regarding the the powder mildew though, do. I don't remember what treatment, I don't remember the treatment that is used for that, but what I can do is go back into my notes and find the information and then I can leave it in the description below so that you can come back later and check for that information. But off the bat, I don't remember the solution for that because I don't really have much of an issue issue with the leafy with the mildew okay and white is sharing a tip on how you can control it so she's saying that she used baking soda for the powdery mildew and it is working well so that's one remedy that you can use Let's see, Urban Girl says, I have every insect known to man in my garden. Oh my goodness, that's scary. That is scary because you will have to be on them constantly monitoring them and wow. Han White, I know she was telling me about some of the pests that she has in her garden and she has to be out every day trying to get them under control. And she doesn't have a large garden, so I can just imagine if you have every pest known to man in your garden. I don't think you would have any time leave to do anything at all. It is so easy to just want to get out there and get it done. That's true. Okay, so Leafy Wiggy says tea tree oil for powder and mildew I think okay so there more solution oh thank you so much I saw that too and thank you I have baking soda yes so there you have some solutions okay so urban girl said this morning I found flea beetles slugs pill bugs never heard of that one pill bugs worms and aphids wow plus those little green monsters that you had when you cut down that tree the other day how are they doing by the way did you get them under control that what those bugs that took over your garden after you cut the trees down okay yes so Okay, pill bugs are the same as potato bugs. Okay. Hmm, I guess I can see why that name is fitting. It does look like some little pills, <laughs> except for the stripes on them. Okay. Okay, those bugs are gone. Excellent. Excellent. 
LP says, I found more stocks this year too. I've got something eating my potato plants, but they are not potato beetle, at least I don't think so. I have not seen any bright red or orange. Um, your potato beetles can be bright red or orange, but not always the case because the ones that I have, they are not orange. Their little tiny head is orange, but then their body has a stripe that looks like cream and parmy green. Yes, yeah, so they weren't orange in color. So look for those. And any bugs you see, get rid of them. <laughs> no, you don't want to get rid of any bugs you see. Make sure you verify what they are first before. <laughs> Make sure you verify what they are first before you get rid of them just in case there are good bugs there and you should get rid of them yes because um when i first found the potato bugs in my garden i didn't know what it was and then because it is shaped like the ladybugs and i wasn't sure so i put it in a container and covered it up and gave it some food but then thanks to the quick response of my community um i was able to learn that they were potato bugs and destroy them as quickly as possible okay let's see little pieces but i keep seeing little black things and something is going crazy on my amaranth oh sorry about that my dear i'm not sure what it is um amaranth don't usually well as far as from based on my experience amaranth is one of those plants that usually don't have a lot of issues with pests but growing amaranth or kalalu in my region here last year i had issues with aphids on them almost killed the plants but in general um, they don't really have pest problem so i hope you can figure out what it is that is affecting your plants your amaranth as quickly as possible yeah i'm hoping i won't have any issues with mine the few that I transplanted the other day, I don't know what's going on, but their growth seemed to have been stunted after I transplanted them. So I have some new seedlings that are coming up now. So hopefully those will be okay so that I can get a really nice harvest because you know how Jamaican Kalalu is our number one vegetable. Yes. Let's see, Kiki says, found a lady beetle in my potato this morning. The lady beetle, as in the ladybugs, those actually eat the potato bugs, the larvae of the potato bugs. So if you found ladybugs, then that should be good because they don't eat your plants. But if there's any larvae, or if there's any aphids or stuff like that, then they will eat it. So, yeah. Yes, I hear you. That's how it feels sometimes. Crawling. Nope, go away. <laughs> really, I must have found just the right pest. Their leaves are full of tiny little holes. Oh, yeah, I've never, I'm, I'm yet to experience that with hammerant. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm yet to experience insect putting holes. Well, caterpillars, they're, come to think of it, caterpillars like to, like to feed on, on amaranth. I haven't seen that since I left Jamaica, so I forgot about that. But caterpillars like to feed on it and they will put holes in it. So be on the lookout for your caterpillars. Nothing a little diatomaceous earth won't cure or some BTK. Let's see. 
or some neem oil pesticide. Urban girl says, no, lady beetles are imposters. They look, oh, lady beetles are different from ladybugs. Okay, I always thought they were the same. They look like ladybugs, but they eat your plant. Oh, let me jot that down. I need to research them so that I can identify them just in case I have any issues with them. <laughs> okay. Sounds like you really have all the all the best then. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you you will be able to get them under control though. The good thing, the most important thing is to be able to identify the type of pests that you're having because once you know what type of pest you're having, then you can move on from there, finding out how to get them under control, if not eradicate them altogether. Let's see, LP says, I will, thank you. I have DE, I will give it a shot. Okay, good. You're having all the fun. Yeah. Gosh. You know, at least at least you're able to see what is what is affecting your plants because I have some plants right now and cutworms usually if I have plants that are being damaged by cutworms, I can just go around and dig the root of the plants and I would find the worms. Now I have plants that are being cut down and I can't seem to find any form of cutworms. So I'm assuming it's cutworms because the plants are being cut down, but I don't really know if that is the case. But when you don't know what is affecting your plants, you can't really, how do you treat it? Because you might be treating for one thing and whatever you think it is, is something else. And then my three little Chinese cabbage that I'm looking forward to, they're growing pretty well, but they look like a sift. So, and I don't know what's eating them because no matter how I look, I'm not seeing any pest there. So I don't know what it is. So I can't treat those either. So at least you're in a better position than I am. Sorry that you have so many pests in your garden, but at least you're able to identify them so you can deal with them. So I'm just going to have to do a guessing game. <laughs> yeah, you know your enemies. <laughs> uh, yes, so I'm just going to be doing a guessing game and just keep treating with whatever until I form, until I see improvement. So what are some pests that marigold will attract? Snails, Japanese beetle, and spider mites love to feed on marigold. So if you see your marigold being eaten, just start checking for the snails, Japanese beetle, or the spider mites. Now, what pests are repelled by chrysanthemums? Chrysanthemum will repel things like ticks, and fleas, ants, Japanese beetles, and others. Because chrysanthemums contain a neurotoxin that is called pyrethin. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And this will kill the insect, but it does not harm animals. Okay, so LP wants to know what is Urban Girl's remedy for these pests. I'd like to know too, especially for that, um, what you call her, Lady Beetle. Yes, I'd like to know what it is that you're using to control that as well. Let's see, and White says, I was planning on growing more marigold next year, but no, I won't. Well, it has its benefits, it has its drawback. So while it is attracting some pests, it is repelling others. So all you need to do, if you're going to be growing marigolds, 
there's no guarantee that it is going to definitely bring those pests to your garden. But just in case, then you want to interplant the marigold with something that will repel these pests. Let's see. LP says, I have two tiny Romanesco broccoli seedlings, and yet I found two almost invisible green caterpillars in one. I didn't even think they were big enough to be eaten. I gladly smash them with rocks. <laughs> Take no chances, eh? All my marigolds grow unhealthy. I'm sorry to hear that leafy wiggy. Did you start them from seeds or did you start them from, um, did you buy seedlings? The first set of marigolds that I planted, they didn't germinate. The second set that I planted, they have germinated, but I don't know if they're supposed to be growing that slowly. They're growing rather slow. A few plants are doing okay, but the others are just moving rather slowly. Okay, you planted them from seeds. Yes, because I'm waiting to transplant them out into the garden because I have them in trees. Because when I tried planting them in the garden with other stuff, they didn't germinate. So I started them in trees. So now I'm just there waiting for them to grow enough for me to transplant them. And I think I'm going to wait until they are bigger than you would normally transplant them, just so that they are stronger in case they go in the garden that has a little bit too much nutrients in there and get burnt. Let's see. So Urban Girl says, I have marigolds everywhere. I bought the seeds from the dollar store and they are doing great. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And I'm giving mine a few weeks to see what they're up to. The only good thing is that I transplanted a few and they seem to be doing okay. I did not use any Epsom salt to prevent the transfer shock, but they didn't even look as if they were transplanted. So I'm happy for those ones that are doing okay. Let's see. And why it says mine are all germinated and they're all doing well i guess and got a few plants from one of our local supermarkets okay yeah i was thinking of getting a few plants too but because mine are taking so long to bloom or to grow to the point where they are producing the flowers so but i didn't go ahead with that but I did went and buy a few. I did go, not went. <laughs> I did go and buy a few plants. So as you know, my rosemary that I started from seeds, none of them did well. My cucumbers, very few of them are doing well. And none of my basil and I had lemon basil and I had sweet basil and none of those seeds germinated even though I made many attempts so I went and bought basil but it's neat I don't know the, the, the package says it is Italian basil it kind of smell a bit lemony so I don't know if it is lemon basil but yes and I bought some cucumbers and I got a rosemary plant so I'm quite happy. So I've transplanted the cucumber as well. Some of them, and they're looking okay. But then for, I was a bit disappointed because I don't know, maybe I'm going half blind or going blind. When I took up the cucumbers, all I um, all the time that I spent there trying to find the variety that I am buying, I could I did not see what variety I was buying. But after taking up two containers with about four or five in there, I saw another set of cucumbers that were much bigger. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go look at those. And it is a good thing that I actually went and looked at them because I found after I was about to, when I was about to transplant them, all of a sudden the name that I was looking for <laughs> appeared. 
<laughs> so the last set, the larger ones that I took up is actually the ones that I intended to buy. So it's the slicing tomatoes. But then the other two containers with the five plants, to my dismay, it's pickling tomatoes. What am I doing with pickling tomatoes? I don't pick up things unless it's peppers, scotch bonnet peppers. So anyway, the kids will enjoy eating them. So, But I'm a bit disappointed because I don't really have, I only have two plants of slicing tomatoes. Not tomatoes, cucumbers. Why do I say tomatoes? Let's see. Okay, the ones, the miracles you planted haven't bloomed yet and white. Okay. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting to see what my garden is going to look like this year because I have a few flowers growing in them. They haven't reached to any stage where it's worth talking about yet, but it will be interesting to see how my all those, those garden turn out. Okay, so I finished my project that I was working on. So now I need to go and collect some more of my tools from the job site. So if there are no other comments, then I'm going to say goodbye to you guys and thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing those practical information to benefit each other. And I hope to see you again possibly on Friday. I am not certain yet. I might be taking a break for a few days, not from, not from YouTube, but taking a break from work. And... I might go out of town for a few days. If that is the case, then depending on what the internet service is like, where I'm going, if I'm going, I might have the live as well as I might not. So I will give you an update though to let you know if I'm going to be doing the worm, worm farm live on Friday. But you will definitely have your videos though as long as the internet is working well enough to upload them. So I'm going to have to record my videos tomorrow because if I'm going on that trip, it will be Wednesday. Let's see. I do love the way you use up all your space in your garden. Oh yes, thank you all for the help. Great advice. Have a great week, everyone. Okay, yes, thank you, Matmejan. I do try to use up as much space as I can. Because I don't really have a lot of space, so I have to make do. Yes, yeah, so take care, guys, and hope to see you again on Friday. All being well. And if not, I'll see you on Monday. And stay safe. Happy gardening. Yeah, man. It's time to grow. Let's see, and White says, have a wonderful week, everyone. And Asian says, have a blessed night. I hope you get to go on that trip. I hope so too, but it's not dependent on me. It's dependent on my husband's work. Sneak away to go fishing. We haven't done any fishing since the season starts, so. My son is driving us crazy, wanting to go fishing, so hopefully we'll get the chance to take him out. Looking forward to catching up on videos and work. Best to you all. Okay, take care. Have a good night.